Continuing on with the theme of the previous video, which related the ribs, these guys here, bam, all the way back to the thoracic vertebrae, just wanted to take a different angle on this, uh, quite literally, in fact. So there's this really cool muscle, like, like really cool muscle, um, top five muscles easily, like no question, and it's called the serratus anterior, and simply because of its wide origin or breadth in general because of its its way that it works through the rib cage and the way that rib cage interacts with the thoracic spine it actually has a significant ability to detrimentally affect that rib cage thoracic spine articulation that joining of the two and of course all muscles have the ability to negatively affect the body if they're not working right but this is a really neat one so the serratus anterior itself runs from ribs at least one all the way down to you know maybe like eight or nine depending and it's a bunch of individual strips sort of um, that attach into the medial border of the scapula It'll be going underneath the scapula in this case but uh, just for clarity's sake we're gonna we're gonna keep that part out you can see it in this other picture this is pre-drawn of course where it's inserting the arrow points into the medial border here and then the circles represent the origin quote unquote and because of this, it's it's fairly long and fairly large, and we consider it, because we consider the scapula to be the more moving part, we consider it to be a scapula mover, so it can pull the scapula forward, it'll give it a little bit of an angle and a curve, of course, and th this is important, in fact, it's called the boxer's muscle, because it assists with, you know, that whole punchy thing that they do. In any case, it being solely a scapular mover doesn't make a lot of sense because you have to consider the way in which the arm can pull through it into the rib cage. The idea that you can move one structure without moving the other attachment point is, is very ridiculous just you know based on the physics of it. So the serratus anterior, of course, especially when the arm is fixed in place and, and the scapula goes to move, uh, the scapula is more fixed point, it will pull through the ribs into the scapula, reversing, you could say, origin insertion. We don't need to get technical, but certainly can have an effect and certainly could change the way the rib and the thoracic vertebrae interact. Again, this is true of all muscles, but this is a good one. So the key point here that I will make is that the ribs are attached by the serratus anterior but there's going to be shared fascial connection and this is an important point it seems like nothing but it's an important point so the intercostals which run all the way up and down this i'm only drawing the one but the intercostals that run all up and down this this serratus anterior muscle really should tie into them if they don't tie in directly they must at least tie in through the shared fascia because that fascia of the intercostal muscles, I've just drawn the external and internal, there's a straight layer as well, but there would be a fascial layer wrapping around this and it ties in quite nicely. And with each one of these slips, again, there would be one for every single rib, there's gonna be a shared connective tissue between them. So when you exert a pull on that serratus anterior, when you pull through that serratus anterior, you start to pull in between those ribs, not just on those ribs, but in between them. And when you pull like that up to a point, like so, it's not the best one, but hey, that's all right. It's going to take up the slack in this area, pull up some of the slack that's in that intercostal space, essentially cinching the ribs a little bit. Now they're not behaving individually, they lose their flexibility they don't have the ability to expand as they once did before. At the same time, just flipping to the other picture, look at the, the width and the breadth of this muscle. There would be a shared fascia, even though there's a lot of individual slips, individual slips, they do converge, and even the midpoint, they're fairly close together. So that means they are tied together throughout, and so it can't really act individually. There is some, of, of course, there's some capability, for that muscle to contract one part more than the other. But at the same time, their fascia, their connective tissues between them should pull more as a unified structure. So 
should that muscle be over contracting it's getting too much nerve juice it's it's firing too much when we use it or maybe it's just holding too strong all the time now or you've got thickening and fibrosis throughout it as it happens as we overuse it, there's a lot of that fibrotic tissue ecm and fibrin and all that for whatever reason the muscle becomes more rigid because it's been pulled on for for whatever reason and that arm is still moving normally a lot of that force will be transferred into that thoracic spine and when that's the case when we started to cinch those ribs up when we've taken out the space it's as if we were kind of doing this we've compressed that's terrible there we go that we've kind of compressed that was gray and boring there we've compressed that ribs and when we push those ribs together those those ribs can't move individually it's the exact same as if we lose our lateral expansion ability of those ribs it can't do that which incidentally is inhalation it's it's breathing in which is you know kind of important at the same time when those ribs let me just clear some of this up because it's just starting to look messy when we lose that ability to separate those fibers when these guys no longer work individually when they don't have the la the lateral expansion here we are also going to start to lose total rib thoracic vertebrae independence. So imagine for a second, especially if it was on both sides, just throw a quick, quick scapula in there on either side. And imagine we had that serratus anterior muscle pulling too hard or getting pulled, pulled, pulling too hard on the ribs, let's say, <laughs> pulling too hard on the ribs. And it's putting pressure in to here it would in fact be pushing in at this point on that thoracic vertebrae rib articulation and now in our previous example we didn't have the rotation here well in this case it would be more more that we didn't really have much thoracic vertebrae motion at all it wasn't just about rotation it's about any direction because we fixed all of these rib heads now this is a this is a front view all of these ribs heads are being pushed inward towards the vertebral body to the disc really they're all getting kind of smushed inward and as they put pressure on those vertebral body we also start to lose the motion the backwards forwards flexion extension all that stuff we lose all that stuff in here it's just kind of knocked out globally and this is really throughout the the entire spine so we start to lose total mobility generally like you still have some but generally just from one seemingly small muscle so sometimes a muscle can have a very full body effect i mean really they all can if they're enough trouble 